today I'll be making a birch bark sheath just like this one. This was one of the first birch bark sheaths that I ever made. It's a little bit bulky and a little bit too wide, moves around a little bit if you shake it, but it does the trick and it served me well over the years. After all, the goal is to protect the blade's edge and also to protect yourself from it. And this here is the knife that I'll be giving the sheath to today. So this is a strip of birch bark. I soaked it for about an hour before starting and then cut it into these strips, one thicker and one thinner. Sometimes the birch bark can be a bit rough and a bit thick. So what I like to do is just scrape off the excess on the back of a pair of scissors like this. These leftover shavings are super fine. It would make an excellent fire starter. So on to the milk paint. I actually added too much water to this milk paint, so it's pretty runny, pretty thin. So I will have to do a second coat. Typically just a small amount of powder and a small amount of water will do it. You can always add more as you go along. I love using milk paint for my craft work. It has this really nice old fashioned look and feel to it, kind of faded. This particular paint is barn red. So once I'm done this first coat, I'll just stick it in front of a fan. It dries super quick. And just in case you didn't notice, I am using a frisbee as a painter's palette. It's good to reuse and recycle as much as possible. I usually don't paint my birch bark sheets, but it was a special request by the knife's owner, and it does add a really nice little extra something special to the knife sheath. My favorite is of course the natural color of the birch bark itself. So now it's on to the next coat. So I rinsed the frisbee and then just from the leftover moisture I mixed that with some additional powder. Now I have a nice dark rich color. The faded look does look really nice because you can still see a lot of the texture from the birch bark itself but I wanted the color to be nice and rich so there would be some good contrast because I'm not going to paint the smaller part that we will use as the weave. And this stuff does dry really quick, even without the assistance of a fan. You just leave it out, go clean up your area, and by the time you come back it'll be completely dry. Just about done here, and then we can move on to the actual creation of the sheath. So now it's completely dry, I think the color looks great, it's time to begin the actual weave itself. So the first step now is to mark out the shape. And you'll do that by holding it up to the knife and seeing where and how long the sheath has to be. You can create a small little indent by bending it over on the tip of the blade and then fold the birch bark over. You need to make sure your birch bark strip is long enough to cover the length of the blade times four. So I'll be keeping the color surface on the outside, folding it inward and then folding it in half. I'm then going to repeat this on the other side. So I'm just lining it up here to make sure it's as straight as possible, pinching the top and the bottom to keep them flat. As I unfold you can see the lengths are equal to each other and I'm just going to see if the actual strip is thick enough. If you leave it too thin, it will be too tight after you weave it. If you leave it too thick, You'll see from my first sheath at the beginning of the video that it'll wobble back and forth. So you can cut it too thick and then measure it against the knife and then use your scissors to cut it to the exact thickness that you'll need. So after it's folded in half, I'm marking where the other side will bend inwards. Once I found the appropriate length, I'm just gonna go ahead and trim it to length using my scissors. And I'm just being careful to keep it straight so that it's a clean, tuck in. And now that that's cut, I'm just going to go ahead and fold it in and I'll press the top and press the bottom, line it up, make sure everything's even, making sure that it hasn't cracked. So everything looks good. I'm going to go ahead and fit the knife in, see if everything is wide enough so that I can begin to weave. So it looks good. I can actually start weaving now, but I just want to make sure it lines up nicely so I'm looking for any spots that stick out and then I'm just going to go ahead and trim them with my scissors. And it's just one minor spot there. So it's just going to need a tiny sliver to be trimmed off. And I'm happy with that. And now to begin the weave. 
You can use a thicker strip so that there's less actual weaving. I like the look of a thinner strip. So what I'm going to do here is thin out the weave strip just a bit more and straighten it out. Now birch bark is a wonderful magical substance. They've been using it for generations for all kinds of crafts, art, practical purposes, baskets, canoes, all kinds of things. It peels off just like paper and it actually rips clean up and down the strips as well. So these were actually ripped by hand and they follow the grain of the bark so well that it stays pretty straight. With it all thinned out, it's time to begin the actual weave. Begin near the top of the sheath, tuck it in on the inside loop. Keeping it firm, what you're going to do is take the other end and weave it through the inside loop once again. Pull it tight and then squeeze it. Just give it a little pinch so that it folds over nice and firm. Doing this on the inside loop first allows it to stay firmly in place while you do the rest of the weave. Once that's tight and firm, go ahead and take the strip and wrap it around the outside of the sheath now. Wrap it once and then you'll tuck it in once again. Once you have this pattern, you'll see that it's very straightforward. One wrap on the inside loops, one wrap on the outside. As I go, I'm going to continuously test fit the blade. This ensures that the weave is not too tight because if it is, I'll have a hard time getting the blade in the sheath. And do be careful, much like I am here, because these blades are very sharp. Happy with the fit? I want to make it so that it's firm enough so that if I actually hold the blade by the handle and wave it forward, that the sheath won't go flying off. But I also don't want it too stiff that it's hard to get in and out of the sheath because as you're working, you'll need to continuously sheath your knife and unsheath it. Always a good general rule to keep your knife sheathed at all times when it's not in use. It can easily be knocked onto the floor which will damage the blade and you can also accidentally hurt yourself on the edge. So always just keep it sheathed no matter what, whenever it's not in use. Now birch bark looks really great for these kinds of knives. It sort of just goes with it, as does leather. But if you don't have leather or birch bark lying around, you can actually use a cereal box and accomplish the exact same thing. Any stiff kind of cardboard that's thin enough to be folded like this can absolutely be used. And it'll be the exact same process as this. Halfway done. This is a very easy little project for anyone to give a try. It's just a basic little weave in and then out. Fold and then cut to size. The only little difficulty you might run into is that the weave strip is not long enough. And in that case, you can sort of just tuck it and it will stay, but it's good to get it right to the end because it looks really nice. You can also tape an extra little piece onto it and if you're lucky enough that taped piece will be hidden within the sheath itself but just play it safe and try to keep the weaving strip as long as possible at this point I just have the knife in the sheath and this way I know for sure that it's a perfect fit there's a space on the inside that I have to leave to make sure that it's not too tight all right that's looking great it's time for the final two tucks and as you can see here it was almost not long enough but I got really lucky here so all I need to do is fold it forward and it's a little tight so I'm just gonna trim off just a little bit so that it's a nice little tuck perfect now that it's in this is the final little bit Good. So now I'm just going to give it a squeeze all over and this is just to make sure that all the birch bark strips stay in place and they don't pop out, after which everything stays in place permanently. It will protect this blade and since it's just a standard Morikaneff blade, it can be used on any standard Morikaneff blade just like this. I hope you found this to be helpful. Thank you for watching.